Sunderland to be specific. Usually I'm in China, but I'm back home visiting friends and family. And today I thought I'll show you Sunderland, but we're gonna show you the decline of the cities around England. And today is Sunderland, unfortunately. And I've got Eugene, my friend Eugene here, and he's gonna show us around Sunderland, what's been shut down, what's closing down, and how things are just going from up to down. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to the uh, RF's YouTube video channel. I'm proud to be here as a first timer. Give me one moment just to add to the simple uh, telephone. You had one job! One you had job. one job! Apologies about that, YouTube video fans of Arif, and for this now first time me. As I said, I'm proud to be here. I apologize about the interruption we had where I'd answer an important phone call. The message for today is the, uh, the message that me and Arif are gonna try and get across is, We've grew up as friends in this wonderful city of Sunderland that a lot of people talk about as, as being in a part of the UK where at the moment there is a, a current economical crisis due to many reasons that are, that, that are obvious in, in the day and age that we live in, in, in the current world climate. So back to the topic at hand. As I say, me and Arif, we, uh, we grew up here as friends in this wonderful city once again, I repeat, but the sad state of the current economical crisis going on in this part of the UK, as well as every other part of the UK, we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna go for a walk around the city in establishments that we grew up as friends, going out to enjoy ourselves in, whether it was the, the cinema, the local bars where it's with students and where it's with the local people who go to enjoy a day out to watch sports, or whether it's the nightclubs or whether it's any other regular food establishments or technology shops would sell all the stuff that makes people go out with the town and enjoy themselves for a day out or even just for a little shopping spree we're going to go out we're going to show you the places that were once were once in Sunderland which are now either no longer in business or have been demolished altogether and there's nothing there and with what's currently going on in the economical uh, cash crisis it doesn't look like there's any improvement in signs of rebuilding the city so let's go so basically what we're actually doing today is we're showing you Sunderland Sunderland used to be a booming city I used to love going out on a night out in Sunderland going out during the day the shops the cinema but there has been a massive huge decline because of you know what a few years ago so everything stopped shops have closed the cinemas closed now Marks and Spencer's is closing now. Sonata's, our favourite pub, is closing now. Everyone's so favourite pub. Everyone's favourite pub. It's sad, it's sad, but we thought we'll show you what's going on and hopefully people will take notice and, yeah, stop this from happening. Stop the crisis. Stop Sunderland from shutting down. Rebuild wants, this great city. Rebuild more, Sunderland. But, you know, even people from Newcastle don't want Sunderland to go down, do you know what I mean? They don't want Sunderland to shut down. Uh, maybe they do, <laughs> I don't know. But I'm sure they don't. I'm sure they want the Northeast to be booming. The Northeast all together. So yeah, let's show you what's happening in Sunderland and the many places that have closed and shut down, unfortunately. We are about to take you to what was once the heart and symbol and the cornerstone of one of the most famous pubs in Sunderland, Sinatra's. Sinatra's. I say this with a touch of being serious, but I say this with a touch of light-hearted humour because every generation of man, granddad, child and son who's ever gone out to enjoy just a casual day out with members of the family, just watch football, just have a drink, whatever, would go to this place. And what we're gonna show you in just a second, what remains there, it's ashes, it's nothing more. It's like a church, it was like a church to people really, wasn't it? It was a holy it place was a way of life to some people. To, to some people in the city. Other places, other cities have different you know, things with the, with the classes, yeah, let's go out and have a day out in this place that resembles what Sunderland is or what the cities are, but we're going to show you it's, it's in ruins, it's in ashes, nothing's going to be built there. So this is the first sign you're going to see of what the, the current state of decline we're in. Let's have a go. Let's go. We are approaching the piece of land, which is what this red fences here. I think it used to be there, yeah, behind this red fence. So let's cross the road so we can get a clearer, uh, a clearer picture of the viewers. Right. Just crossing over now. 
to get a good angle of where Sonata is used to be. So yeah, just behind that red fence here. Yeah? Right where we are, as we stand, where you see the crane and the works taking place in the background, right in front of you, was the Sonata's pub. This is where we were, just there you go, it was just a um, building here, big tall building, Sonata's about 20 foot wide, 20 foot high wide, high wide and handsome as, as many would say. And Certainly it was. was. Like 50 years, literally a, a, a generation. The building that just got demolished went down straight away and all that remains is just a piece of wasteland behind a red f uh, fence put up by the council just to not make the city look like the current SHIT hall that it's to so many in the eyes of so many. It used to be like a karaoke bar, is that yes, right? Yeah, karaoke bar, yeah. Uh, I'm proud to see it served a pint and a pot noodle for £2.50. Oh, you can't knock that back, you can't knock that back. That's, that's, that that's, 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 that's what you're into, but... Uh, that's what I'm into. Every Friday night, Saturday night, every man, woman and child... Not child. Woman, <laughs> woman, woman, sometimes. <laughs> so, sometimes, but that, that's unofficial. If the pub wasn't doing well. That's off the record. Anyway, <laughs> well, anyway there you go, just, just to keep the life on. That's it, so... Let's go on, let's go on the next one. So that was where Sonaris used to be, the karaoke bar, the very, very popular karaoke bar here in Sunderland. Um, yeah, it just got everybody from every background there. It was like a church for people, but yeah, very, very sad one shut down. Next port of call, as I said, being what, uh, this is where Sonaris was. Now, 180 degree turn the camera, this, as you can see, spotlight. It was a, uh, what is widely known as a snooker hall, just where you go, have a game of pool, have a drink with your friends, watch the football. They had TV screens, pool tables, darts tables, popular game in the North East, darts especially, not so much down there. And what happened to it? What happened to it? As you can see, it's now uh, up for let, uh, the whole of the building, because the company eventually just uh, ultimately went out of business through not the track. Like many places? Like many places. So we're not attracting the customer needs to make it worthwhile being open and making taking next to no money. But it was popular, yeah, it was popular. Highly popular, highly popular, but uh, just priced out. Like people want to come out, and now we've got a rush of the money to see it. Do you want to go out and have a game of pool and enjoy ourselves, or do you want to go out and do the weekly shopping? And people are not going to starve. So what do you expect? Exactly. Yeah, you have to choose either or. Which is very sad. Let's get a closer look of the place. So it was like a pool and snooker hall. Is that right? Yes. We had pool tables, snooker tables. Very good condition. Spot white. Friendly atmosphere. There was there wasn't any ever any sign of trouble. You could come and enjoy yourselves and not be worried. Anything might happen. And uh, as you can see, all that remains now is dust. Can't see a thing. Literally all this dust. Yeah, just dust. Sad. Very sad. I've been here actually once. The reason why I don't know a lot of information about this is because I live in China, I work there, so I come here every winter and summer for a holiday, but I have been here once. It's actually quite newly opened, isn't it? It only opened it in so 20... Two and a half years. So, yeah, so not long. 2021 it opened and I've been in once. Really nice place, but yeah, yeah, I didn't have the opportunity to go a second time because it's closed. Nothing that's gonna. I love him. You yeah, are in this. Oh. I love him. <laughs> will, will, will you make come around with pictures with us? I'll do it another day. Oh no, I want to do it now. Do something. I'm richy rich. <laughs> <laughs> when? When? Because what? Nuts, me nuts are firing. <laughs> Where do you need to be? What the We're about 200 yards away where we were. Pretty much in the heart of the town centre. We're going to take you to the closed down cinema. That opened in Sunderland since 2005. You know how I remember. It, the first film I ever went and watched, I was still in year 10. So in England, that's like you're about 15 years old. Me and about seven mates, we went and watched the film called. Um, I can't remember. Queen Latifah was in it. And Steve Martin. Who? Queen who? Steve Martin. Came I know Steve Martin. I don't know Queen Latifah is what, like. Four, four, two, I know Queen four, Elizabeth. This is. Uh, Frankie and Benny's. Oh, is that closed as well? No way! I didn't even know this was closed. To left again, see? Zoom in, just show them that there's nothing inside but dust and. I didn't actually know Frankie's and Benny's was closed. Oh, yeah. It's like a ghost town. Oh, wow. 
So Frank is a bit. So this is where you came. Oh, the national was closed. Uh, if you want to take kids out for a birthday party with the friends, you brought them here for a bite to eat. Frank and Benny's, nice big tables, American style uh, menu, burger, chips, whatever, whatever you want. It's irrelevant. And then around the corner, you took them to the cinema. Which... I didn't actually know Frank's and Benny's was closed, so yeah, that was a little surprise. Um, but yeah, we're at the cinema now. I used to go here when I was a kid. Um, yeah, it was absolutely great memories, great memories. Yeah, well, when we were in college, I don't know if people in China have ever heard of one of the most beautiful things in sliced bread, Orange Wednesdays, where you go two seconds. Oh, orange Wednesdays was great. For the price. Yeah, two for one, Orange Wednesdays. You see it every, every Wednesday, four five. It's very windy, so... A porridge cap. Yeah. Let's see what the notice of notice peaceable <laughs> of peaceful re-entry. Anyway, basically just to say that it's it's uh, it was now closed. As Basically since game over. The show the show's over. Here for eighteen years, every Saturday, Tuesday, Wednesday, kids watch the brand new latest for these films. And now, I'll let you guess, Arif doesn't know this because he hasn't been in Sutherland for a year. So I'm going to ask you a question now. Where, how far do you have to travel to go to the nearest cinema? From as we, where we are near, as we started. So I know of two cinemas, quite far, not very near. One is in East Bolden, which is a 15, 20 minute bus ride away. So. Or longer, probably 25 minutes. 25, 20 minutes. 20 minutes. 20 minutes. And there's a tiny one, I mean tiny one, which only shows old films, I believe, I think. The Custom House in South Shields. And that's that's about a half an hour drive that's away. That's more than half an hour. It's more than half an hour. If you get the public yeah. transport, uh, and the one and the one after that is 45, 50 minutes away on the post Dublin Park. It's a, it's a local shopping centre in Sunderland. So you've got, if you live in the outskirts of Sunderland, you come in here, 15, 20 minute bus ride from the estates, then you've got to wait to get another bus to South Shields, Bolden, or Dutton Park. You t you're talking an hour and a half to get somewhere to see a film, and an hour and a half to get back. Not what people want. Very inconvenient. Very so basically, inconvenient. if you want some fun now, you have to travel for fun. Um, yeah, let's show you the outside again. Can I add? It was actually a huge I'm, cinema. I'm, 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 huge. I'm, 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 I'm a very important point here, just while speaking casually. Don't eat yellow snow. That's. Anyone who ever wants good advice, don't eat yellow snow. But the, um, all, all these establishment closures, all these businesses going, going down under financially because they can't handle the cost of living or not attract the customer. It's happened since, I'd say, in the time span of year and uh -huh. two years. And you're talking about. Come on, come on, come again, come to the little guy there. So this is. Yeah, the cinema closed down. That's just a random one. Just walking here. Just thought the cinema's still open. There's no other one. I'll go pop in, see a film. There's a perfect example of someone else that's got to work, find something. And now he has to walk to South Shields, the next <laughs> cinema. He's <laughs> better about a good breakfast because he's got he's got a long way to walk. Two hour walk. <laughs> I hope he likes. Uh, get, I hope he's got his uh, steps count ready on his phone. I think he has. I think he's doing it now. Then yet in months or two years. We wrote a list of about 20 major establishments where people will come and have a good time out in the town centre and spend the day that are just no longer here. Sunderland looks like a city that was great in the past, but now it seems to have degenerated. We've got, we've got basically just a random walker by that has no idea of the set of some weather. I, I thought it would be out of time. Yeah. And uh, as I say, you've got, you've, got, you've got to travel now to find something to happen like this gentleman. I have to add that it's not just Sunderland where places are shutting down, it's all of the UK basically. Um, we just happen to be in Sunderland, so we're making a video about Sunderland. But like Debenhams, Debenhams is a, is a, it's, it's a chain company. Very yeah, it's a very big chain, chain company. company. So Debenhams sells house appliances. Debenhams is closed all over the UK at the moment. Top fashion brands, uh, sportswear, workwear, anything. If you, if you want something, Buy that you paid for any for your daily. Definitely daily was the one, yeah. So yeah, it's not just Sunderland um, that's on the decline, places closing down. It's 
a lot of cities around the UK. We just happen to be in Sunderland, so we are showing you Sunderland, and we know more about Sunderland because we are from Sunderland. It's one thing having these establishments go out of business and being closed down and being demolished. It's it's not, it's a big problem to them. That's one problem. It's a big problem to see these these lands are now going to be left bare, like to see it. To make a little joke out of it, like you know, friggin' west, yeah, 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 wild west. Uh, you, you can't just walk around the city and see in the street for like a mile long stretch, only two shops open. But it's not well, they're probably there. waiting for like a new business to take up the land. But the thing is, no business is going to take the opportunity or that risk to make the business Where here. You have, you there's have no money. Lot, um, you have a very, very big culture now of what is called widely known online shop. No one wants to go out and as we just said peer the middle man for pay the staff pay the lights when you can just buy it online for cheaper. So that's like a worldwide problem actually, not just a UK it's a problem. So we are headed now to Marks and Spencer's it's so not closed yet. So yes. the famous high street where Turn around. there's generations of uh, years and years and years and decades of uh, food shops being open. And sadly, we're about to take it to a landmark shopping centre that's going to be closed effective immediately. And it is Mark Spencer's. It's not sure. closed nationwide. I know it's closing in Sunderland, maybe other cities too. But yeah, it's not a nationwide nationwide closure. Just a Sunderland, as far as I know, and maybe other cities. But yeah, very, very popular with the older generation. Um, Mark and Spencer's. I don't go there much, but yeah. Popular with the older generation, as far as I know. Very sad to see. It's, uh, when you look at it, it's a uh, land covered by 80 feet stretch and uh, 40 foot high. And when... Good measurements, that. It is. And when you're going to look at it and think there's going to be nothing inside it, it makes you think, what does the future hold for buildings like this in a city like this? Because Sunland is a UK city, not just a town. But as we see it, this is just... It's turning into a town. This is just an example of, of a city going down under financially, just where we happen to live and are from. Which is sad to see. Which is sad to see in any city, not just ours, but... Uh, exactly. We just happen to be here. As we see it, but what is the future hold for these buildings when nothing's going to replace them and it's going to be empty inside? I think they've got the lease till 2027, but it's closing in 2024 because, as far as I know, it's just not making money. It begs the question as we see it. What we've been speaking about just a very short while ago, if people are, let's use the word, and I, and I don't think we're being controversial when we use the word lazy, and, I, and I'm going to use it. If someone is too lazy to come down the town where the shopping centres are and do the shopping socialise with people, and I think the easy way out is doing online shopping, there may be an incentive that it's a little bit cheaper grown up as we are, the type of people we are, there's a lot like us. I would prefer just to come down, socialise, grab a coffee. It's plenty of nice coffee. Especially the people that go and Marks and Spencer because that's the older generation here. They want to go out for the conversation. When you have even a place like that, that attracts a large number of people who wouldn't do the shopping physically and pay the middleman, as it were. Again, it's not a very good sign of uh, the economic crisis we're in to, for us to find a way out of it any time anytime soon if if sad to see it at all there's a claim to fame for sunderland actually i'm looking at it right now if you look there in the distance that says hayes travel hayes travel is actually a sunderland company made in sunderland UK's and his first flight centers and it's nationwide i believe it's all over england so yeah you believe right Flame, fame for Sunderland. Hayes Travel is from Sunderland, a travel agency. So yeah, that's a positive side. Travel to China, go to Hayes Travel. Yeah. No, but nobody offers you more. Hey, but Hayes Travel. <laughs> We're uh, in a part of the city now where this thing is in the Soros full of... The, the point we need to understand before we get into this conversation is Sunderland for a very long time attracted a large uh, number of students from every corner of the planet yeah. America, Canada, Very Australia. Busy. Not anymore, not 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 the case, not so has been the case since five, six years ago. We're about to walk down the street where it was uh, 
It was busy, a very, very busy street actually. Any hour of the day, as long as the pubs are open for business, uh, even on a Sunday, random Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, boys and girls football teams, gymnastics teams, uh, any, 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 any sports organisations that were run by students. That's a nice shot of the Southern Empire, just to distract us for a second. Yeah. Hopefully this doesn't go. Uh, yeah, hopefully this doesn't go as well. <laughs> Yeah, the, the student bars down here will fit uh, full night and day, every day. Out Not anymore. Out of about seven that were. There used to be actually a revolution there over there. Revolution. And that was booming. That's was closed down. Because, uh, because of uh, as a consequence of student education control, it's no longer a process now to go to the university, and it's no longer popular. Undoubtedly, it has an effect on the economy if you're not having students here. Whether oh, they're yeah. admitted or not, but they're... They bring a lot to the economy. Yeah, Revolution was very popular with the students, especially when I was a student. Yeah, it was absolutely packed. That's where Revolution used to be. There's still a Revolution in Newcastle, actually. I was there the no, other day. It's never closed down far. That has been like this for six months. Oh, is this closed now? Yes. Street bar? Yeah. yeah. How long has this been here? Oh wow, I didn't know it was closed. What are they doing then? Are they fixing the building or? No sign of the takeover, no sign of it reopening. Let's go to the next one. Yeah, I miss Revolution, I really do. Two right, for one right cocktails? Next to, right next to it, Victoria's Loft, but the sign's been took down. Is that closing as well? That's, that's been closed for two years. With the oh, the Victoria, there. I remember that as well. There as well. I remember the Victoria. Great spring means open, but only just, only just. Only just because it's very, very popular with the match day crowd. Usually you watch Sunderland play, then you walk down to the town and you go to Greens. Fossil very popular. information for you to understand. Sunland Stadium is just a short 15 minute walk away from where we're currently 15? 15, 2015. Yeah. Wait, is it 50? <laughs> so people come here, have, uh, have a drink, is what the term that's used. Go and watch Sunland play, come back, have a drink, drown the sorrows. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, drown your sorrows in greens. I think that's accurate, isn't it? Decent beer. More or less. We win sometimes. More often than not, with Anyway. Now in the championship, we'll win more often. You're going to turn the camera around to what is now Indian restaurants. I bet you didn't know. Did you? No, you didn't. I didn't know it was an Indian restaurant here. A no. long time ago, for 20, 30 years, we used to call your students. Again, the students, which that sort of lifestyle doesn't exist so much for longer, unfortunately. We made for breakfast two or three times a week. Oh, yeah, the man. Lamp this was a lamp to worm. Lamp to worm. Yeah, what is food? Yeah. yeah. Lamp to I remember that. Lamp to worm to Victors. It was the London World Mother Spoons for 30 odd years, changed the Victors. <laughs> that worked out for a number of years. Eventually went lost there, and after that, it's changed to an Indian restaurant. And there. The clue is doing well for now. It's not oh, it's, open it's doing well for now. But it'll be a brave man to say that it'll continue to do well just because of where it's located in the town centre. If you want to the camera do a 360 the amount of population that circulates and you can see that's and when I say it's hard to travel it's 20 past 2 in the afternoon it's supposed to be open as a all day hours restaurant oh, there is? and now they've got just a only open at the night at night time at night time full of crap now there's six people here at the night time will be minus six that people here <laughs> <laughs> yeah do the maths work it out so, Right, so I'm not sure if this pub is closed or not, but there's a sign there. I mean, it's rubbish everywhere. I'm presuming it's closed. Um, notice. Given by the notice, I think it's closed permanently. Baylifts? <laughs> right, so not to draw any quick conclusions here, but I think what that says is, they owe money to the council. So basically what that says is, 
is the fuck. Basically, basically, what that says is, um, yeah, I don't think it's looking good. Yeah, it's definitely not looking good. Um, let's have a look inside. If you can see anything. It looks nice, actually. It looks pretty big. It looks nice. It's a shame about uh, the rubbish, but it looks close, so that's why it's rubbish there. Fact for you, this place has been called Bud Bigelow's. Over oh, Bud Bigelow's ago. years ago, yeah. You could come in as a student, pay £10 in, and for two hours you had a free bar. And you could drink Great beer, uh, 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 cider, a VK back then, cherry VK, apple VK, orange VK. There actually Rats used to be a here. DJ there with a bull, right? Those the bull bulls, line. yeah. And every time you walked in with white socks, he used to put this tune on saying, I see white socks, we're right over there. And he will just bully you from beginning to end, just torture you if you wore white socks. So every time you went to Bud Bigelow's, you couldn't wear white socks or you'll be a center of attention to the DJ. It was, uh, do you remember what some Ramza would be a dare on FIFA who would wear the white socks. Yeah. We had dares who played like FIFA, forfeits. computer games, forfeits. Whoever lost had to wear white, white socks, socks when we went there. And so uh, they could get abuse of the DJ. Yeah, abuse literally from beginning to end. And he he then, would not stop. And just out of that, back then, it was back in the glory days of the non politically correct approach. So you make your own mind of what God said. Yeah, he used some uh, very uh, colorful language, <laughs> flavorsome words. Some, some some very um, let's see, let's say they were called topics that wouldn't be raised now <laughs> for sure not Debenhams closed but this is a nationwide closure of Debenhams not just Sunderland that used to be UFC back in the day uh, USC sorry USC, USC back in the day oh, yeah it's not a very good look for you mean biggest shopping center when you walk in and the first two shops in there are closed yeah <laughs> as soon as you walk in the first two shops are closed yeah not a very good look got uh h&m over there yeah so this is the bridges the indoor shopping center here in sunderland full of shops DMV. DMV. around here all right major brand Another shop closed here. Used to be Top Man, then it was four, Blue Ink, was it? One, two, three, four shops in all three of them closed four. Four, oh yeah. Leading labels, that's closed. Bloody hell. What's this one then? Is this closed as well? Closed down. Yeah. No way. Shh, so quiet six, room. So six shops, four of them are closed. It's not looking good. So There's more open shops here though, if you have a look. There's more open more shops. Open. Yeah. There's more open shops here. It's looking a little better now. There's light at the end of the tunnel. We've got savers, that's open, thank God. There's Hayes Travel, Again. that's open. Waterstone's open, good, next open. Oh, we've got some open shops here. <coughs> Telly is looking good, oh. I should have said we're looking good. Whatever that is, close. What, what is that? Was that a shop or not? Uh, I think it's a foreign exchange currency thing. Oh, exchange currency. It's just relocated just there. Oh, it's a relocated here. Yeah. Wow. Well. So this is one of the main squares they in the square. town. Well, the main square, yeah. And uh, as you can see by looking around here, yeah, because of the consequences of shop closures and business closures and uh, any other establishments, not just around there. Many people circling around the main town centre. It's going to forever continue to be like this unless something drastic changes, which at the moment doesn't look like it is. <laughs> as a positive, as a positive, there's a new train station there. State of the art. <laughs> I won't go that far. Well, but um, yeah. It was advertised as. <laughs> yeah, it's not, uh, it's not as state as the art as it should be. We'll go. I see it's in the art. Let's have a little look inside. And, yeah, let's have a look and, inside. And you, and gonna, you gonna judge for yourself. Just judge for yourself. This is brand new, actually, Before yeah. Before we go in, all I think that's in there is two seats. <laughs> two seat blocks. <laughs> and actually, look, by having an initial look, I think... Yeah, I'm it was advertised as state-of-the-art train station. Have, like, a they conned us. They conned us. They conned us. It's got this just... 
This is it? Just three seat blocks. <laughs> <laughs> it's already still the awkward. I mean, it's just an empty building. That's exactly right, what it is. At least it's a positive. At least. Uh, yeah, exactly. At least it's a positive. It's something new, shall I say? Yeah. Something, something to work on. Something to build on. So I just want to have a look at the toilets. There's an interesting sign that I saw the other day. Toilets closed due to vandalism. Very interesting. Very interesting. We're in Mowbray Park where we start to film up. The only thing, this is the only place in Sunderland that resembles a city for the way it has been all the years ago, including its glory days, dating back to 10, 20 years ago. Beautiful. It's changed much, it's beautiful. I like coming in for a walk sometimes, not so to see a claim yet, just to look at the surroundings and see just that it's a nice city and it's still got a lot of potential if things start to improve. And like I said, there is some beautiful parts of Sunderland, like um, down Seaburn Beach. There's a lot of investment being put there in the restaurants, um, the architecture, there's new hotels there, which hopefully we'll make a video about that soon. But today's main video was about just places that are being closed down because it's very upsetting. Yeah, pretty sad that a lot of places in the town have declined basically the, the town has declined a lot hasn't it what do you say the culture of sunland has changed has changed dramatically for the worst for the time being hopefully is the message i'm trying to get across so what do you think um would improve sunland what would you like to see in sunderland in the next few years to basically just to make you happy personally i want to see a lot more people getting off the asses if however that sounds whether it sounds correct or completely correct and going to contribute contribute to local businesses by going out speaking to people go somewhere help someone's business make the economy circulating to the level it was all those years ago again not to sound like a bbc broadcast news reporter but just get off your asses come down to town get the atmosphere going again, then the rest will take care of itself. So basically what he's trying to say is he wants more people in jobs so they can come which to the town centre. Which we can't, which we, nobody can help. We're not, you know, that's not that knows, but People have to help themselves. Yeah. Um, and the government have to provide jobs totally and topic exactly and to make the economy better for people to get jobs but that's a different story altogether so basically what it's trying to say is for more people to get jobs so they can contribute in the town center so places don't close down so that's but that's easy said and done because the government are a bit of a mess and they don't help the economy so it's hard to, to get a job or point, a good job if you do a 360 get on the camera look how empty the park is just because people don't have an excuse to come down in town and make places like this be full of uh, be full in order simple maths you get a park for the people you get a nice green van that, that that's a job well yeah, yeah, exactly yeah uh in the summer you in the winter you get a van selling hot drinks in the summer you get a van selling ice cream just just as a small example there's no one here there's going to be no van Which, simple as that isn't yes. it and there's no customers in the shopping center, there's going to be no shops. That's how it works, isn't it? It's a domino's effect. And unfortunately, in the recent years for Sunderland, the domino effect has been going against them, not for them. Which, which we want to see hopefully change very soon for the better. But that's not the fault of the people as such. It goes from the top to the bottom, you know, shit falls downhill. And basically, it's a fault of, yeah, it's a fault of the government for just providing a crap economy jobs not worth having it's better to be off work than in work because if you're in work in a minimum minimum wage job you're paying for everything and you're always skint and if you're not working you probably get more benefits so it's better not to work sometimes but that's the government's fault it's just backwards it's a backwards economy isn't it as I say, I'm not one to talk about <laughs> politics. It's not my specialty. I don't ever want it to be. Mm, not mine, but it's just the me the message is you know the way it is, isn't it? Get off your asses. Even even if on a day where you think, all right, I've got no reason to leave the house, let's leave the house. Go go downtown. Go downtown. Go anywhere. Opens up different opportunities. 
you might find a job even though you don't want one. Or even if you think you don't need one, you might find one where you think, actually, I prefer to have this lifestyle and earn the same amount of money, as opposed to not working and earning the same amount of money. I know what you mean. Helps it it goes for more of a, like a, a moral and morals kind of point of view. Do you know what I mean? So right now, the economy is so backwards, you probably can get the same money if you're off work or in work. Do you know what I mean? So you'd rather be not working, really. You get the same amount of money. I think what Eugene's trying to say is it's, it's morally nice to work, isn't it? Even if you're getting the same money, it's just it's a sense of pride, isn't it? To work and get paid for it. it by having a company in full flow of business paying out its customers, uh, paying out its Helps staff city, rather yeah. than customers, it creates, having, having people to work in establishments gives an opportunity for people to go in and to pay in these establishments. Everything goes hand in hand. By having people sitting in behind locked doors, people say, all right, people don't want to work, I don't want to go out. Exactly. So it helps the city, helps the economy, hopefully places don't shut down that way. So yeah, we'll end the video there. Hopefully Sunland doesn't become a ghost town. Hopefully not. Um, yeah, that's the plan Fingers for crossed. it not to become a ghost town because it's our town, well, our city. Well, it it is, will turn it into is. a town. <laughs> well, <laughs> one day. But yeah, we're going to end the video there. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments, any questions, comment below. Um, don't this be my, too harsh on us. This is my first time doing this video, which I thoroughly enjoyed. I apologise if I've uh, not lived up to the quality or the standards expected, but this, is, this, this hopefully is the first of many. Apologies if we said anything controversial which we are. or anything that upsets anyone. We're just making a video. We didn't plan it. We just literally press record. Speaking our minds. Yeah, speaking our minds, how we feel about our city. Yeah, let me know what you think, how you feel, and hopefully we'll make another video very, very soon. Over and out. Boom. Bye-bye. See you next time.